Hi, my name is Ryan, and I'd like to do another demo video for Volt. Volt is a Ruby web framework where you write your application in Ruby on both the front end and the back end. And on the front end, the code is compiled to JavaScript using Opal. If you haven't seen Opal, Opal is a Ruby to JavaScript transpiler. It does a great job, and the resulting code is fast and easy to debug. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new project. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details of this. I just kind of want to show what it's like to program in Volt. Volt does uh, has kind of this underlying reactive framework that handles uh, objects telling other objects when they need to update. And so I won't go into the, the details of this, but what you'll notice is that uh, in a lot of cases we can write normal Ruby code and the uh, changes to things like models and views and bindings and things like that automatically know uh, when to update. So let's go ahead and jump into the project. We'll open it. And real quick, bring this over. Uh, and what you'll notice, that's a gem file. Opal provides you a couple of things. You get bootstrap and a theme out of the gate, bundles gems. Um, you'll notice it's broken up under app. Uh, we have one, what we call components, so anything under app is a component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the server and show you what uh, everything looks like out of the gate. Uh, I'm going to open it in Chrome and then just push it off to the side so that you can see it. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, create a to-dos page, uh, to-dos view, and views are broken up into different sections. Um, the way it's initially set up, you typically do a title section and a body section, and um, and what happens is by default the app loads main slash view slash main slash main. Uh, which then renders a template and based on the routes path uh, will load one of these other files. Uh, so index is the default one but uh, we're going to be loading to do's. Uh, and the, the main file is kind of like our layout. It also has um, our navigation by default. So what I'm going to do, um, you'll notice there's this colon. The colon says this is a, a Volt component and so by default this is rendering um, this nav section down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make uh, to-dos link uh, and then when I hit save you'll notice over here that it actually uh, whenever you hit save it actually automatically reloads the page. Um, so in order to make that link work I need to add a route and I'm not going to go through all the details of this but uh, that gives us access to, uh, to that page um, and then what I want to do is I want to create an input um, for the to-do and then this gives us an input field and I want to bind that to new to-dos.label. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, right now at the moment I have to reload uh, the server when I change routes. That will be fixed down the road. Um, so that gives us this. Um, and actually I forgot I should have stuck that in a form. Um, so here we've got our form. These E dash things basically trigger um, trigger code on the controller whenever uh, the event happens. So this says when the when the form submits, call add item. And Volt is a little different than something like Rails. It's actually more of a model view view model um, pattern. And so first it loads the view, and when the view is loaded, it says, okay, I'm in view slash main, I should look for main controller. And then that controller is actually the context for the view itself. So every method call or, or you know, anything in bindings um, actually calls to an instance of the controller, which gets created when it gets rendered. So the main page gets rendered, and then these templates actually create a secondary controller for whatever than the template. So if we load in main, um, the framework would create a controller to render a main controller to render this page, and then it would say, okay, my my main path, for example, is is to do's, and so it would load 
an instance of main controller and then pass that as the context to to do's. So, one, so whenever um, the submit action is called on the form, it's going to call add item. So let's go ahead and add that to our controller. And we're going to use one of the built-in collections. So Vault has a bunch of different collections that persist data in different places. So by default, controllers, um, they proxy to the con this controller's collection. Um, so if we hadn't assigned something, we could use this underscore syntax to say uh, name equals something, for example. And then that'll get stored um, on the controller, basically. Uh, but a lot of times we want to use something like page, for example, to say, OK, I'm going to store items on my page. And page is a temporary store. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this, which again is coming off the controllers, and I'm going to grab uh, just new to do's, which has label in it, and grab the current value, and I stick that into my items. And it comes out as a hash, but then um, it'll get wrapped up as in a model because of the way this works. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to just clear out my new to do's. So I'll just set it to an empty hash. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And then let's also make it so that we can see these. So we'll do a table. Um, we'll take page.items uh, and then this as items is kind of like each. And then we can take our item and say show the label. So then when we add it, you can see it, it took it from the field and, and stuck it up there. Um, Next, what we're going to want to do is, is handle the check state. So we can just add a checkbox and then bind its checked value to item.complete. And so whenever the checkbox is checked, it'll turn true, and whenever it's unchecked, it'll turn false. Uh, I forgot to put this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little styling here. Um, and Vault automatically persists this page collection during, through automatic reloads. So you'll notice it's automatically reloading and it's persisting it through that. It makes it a little easier to develop. Um, so what we, want to, what we want to do is when this changes to true, uh, we want to change the style here to show that it's completed. Um, so I'll go ahead and just say, I'll do an if binding. Uh, and I'll say, if the item is complete, show the complete class. And I don't have any CSS in here yet, so I'm going to go ahead and add todos.css, and we could do sass if we wanted. One nice thing Volt gives you is that it automatically includes your style sheets and JavaScript files for you, so you don't have to manually do script and link tags. So now if we check these, um, they automatically update. And we didn't have to write any event binding code. So that, to me, is a big win. Um, next, what we're going to want to do is make it so that we can easily remove the item. So we'll just add a button. And we'll say, when it's clicked, uh, let's call remove item and pass the item. And so we'll go to our controller, and we'll add a remove item passing the item, we'll say page.items, and we'll delete item. And so the items collection actually behaves like an array. So you can use things like delete at and delete, and it'll handle all those events. Now we delete. Um, so before we get much farther, let me show you something that's interesting. Um, right now we're persisting on page, but let's go ahead and change that to store. Um, store is, a date, is basically the interface to the database. Um, so, sorry, the persistence layer to the database. So, store behaves exactly like page, except you can query it, and it um, it will store things in the database. So, if I reload, um, you'll see it's still working. Uh, but what you'll notice is that um, one, it's persisted to the database, but two, uh, anyone who's connected will see things update in real time uh, automatically because the reactive values know how to update and store basically keeps things in sync for you with the database. Um, 
So that's a really nice feature to have. So now that we've got that working, let's go ahead and make it so that uh, we can check off all the boxes at once. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me show you how to show how many to-dos you have. Um, so we could just look at store.items. Um, it may be nil if we haven't added one, so we'll just say or uh, empty dot size. And you know, normally in Ruby you might do something like this. Um, because of the way uh, Ruby works, those aren't actually method calls. So to make it a method call so that we can uh, make it work with reactive values, we use or there's an or and an and method um, that you can use. <clears throat> so now we'll save and you can see it shows two. Um, so now if we add one more, we get up to three and, and you can see it, it keeps this in sync again without any event code. Um, so now as I was saying, let's go ahead and add a way to check them all off. Um, kind of pasting in some code here, but what this gives you is a checkbox that bind its binds this value to this all completed value, and then when you click on it, it calls this mark all method. Uh, and so let's go ahead and make the mark all method. And before I actually do that, I'm going to go ahead and do a set all, uh, which will loop through all the items and then change their value to whatever we pass in. Change their complete value. Uh, and so what I'm going to want mark all to do is change the value to whatever the state of the checkbox is. So we'll grab its current value. Um, and this dot cur is something that the reactive bindings provide, or the reactive values provide. And so now I can easily just check them back and forth and it'll toggle their state. Okay. Um, one other thing I might want to do is have it where I can select uh, one of these and then see like a kind of breakdown, some description information. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in a little bit of Bootstrap uh, HTML. Um, and then then I'm going to uh, basically create an item, create a method um, or, or a property on the controller that always returns um, the current um, to do, the currently selected to do. So we'll call that current to do, and we'll say what's the label, and we'll save it like that. And I actually misspoke, we're actually going to stick that on page for the time being. Um, so the way the routes work is whenever this to do's file gets loaded, it creates the main controller and then calls a method with the same name as the view. So we'll go ahead and call it to do's, and then on page we'll say current to uh, current to do equals uh, store the items, and we'll grab um, an item at at the currently selected index. So instead of storing index on the controller or something, we can stick it in the, uh, the params collection. So store is a collection, page is a collection, params is a collection. There's just a bunch of others, um, and on this we're gonna and basically the differences between these they all behave the same, but they're backed by different things. So params, for example, is backed in the URL. Um, so we can say uh, this underscore index. Uh, we'll set the index property on the uh, index query parameter on the URL. Um, so if I save that, since it'll be nil to start with, it'll it'll return zero to start. And uh, what that lets me do is let's see, this should be page. Um, now you can see the zero one displays. So let's go ahead and make it so that we can change that index. And the way I'm going to do this is an e click event on the uh, list of stores. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say when it's clicked, we're going to set params.index uh, to index, and index is a value that gets set up by the each store. 
Um, so you can see now if we click if we click on this one, uh, it toggles between them and it updates our URL. Um, so one other thing I'm going to want to do is just something to show that it was selected. Um, so I'll go ahead and say again class equals uh, if comes index equals index. Uh, then we'll set the class to selected and. I won't go into details, but the way, since this is a method call, this makes it really easy to make this reactive as well. Um, so now you can see we're, uh, we're selecting whichever one is is um, is equal to the index value. Um, I'll go ahead and add a description field, and what this lets us do is, um, you know, just keep track of the description. So, sorry, should be page. There we go. Okay, so now that'll all stay together. Um, one last thing, it'd be nice if I could click on um, click on these and edit them, like have have it so I could edit the text. Uh, and I could write my own code for that, but it'd be nice if we could just include a gem to do it. Um, so Vault has a whole bunch of different um, gems that it comes with, and it makes it really easy to actually create your own. There's a generator for it, and, and then um, then what you can do is inside of your component, you can say you can go in the dependencies file and say um, the name of the component, and then it'll get included, and you can use it. Um, let's go ahead and restart the server. Um, and the way you interface with these components is typically they provide uh, controls they're called. And so uh, you may have noticed with the nav before a control um, basically just can render either a, a sub a section in the current template, can render another view, it can render another component or a gem inside of a, a component inside of a gem. So let's go ahead and just change our label here uh, to be displayed inside of an editable component. Text component, uh, and it takes the value that you're going to edit as it takes in a reactive value and as a as the value attribute, and then it'll automatically update that. So, if we reload, we can click on this, and what you'll notice too is that um, it's syncing everything back if it changes it. So that's a quick intro to Volt. Hopefully that gave you kind of a sense of what it's like to program in Vault. The reactive bindings and reactive uh, values really give you a lot of power to take out most of your invented code. And then the storage synchronization, which has live querying, you can update queries and they'll, uh, you can change queries from reactive values and they'll update and um, makes it really nice to do, um, to do a lot of things. There's also the concept of a buffer, which I'll talk about in other videos, which lets you kind of do CRUD apps where you're not actually saving right away. You have some save action that you want to do. Uh, so Volt's still pretty early, but I think it's pretty close to where you can start building full apps in. So uh, please, if you have time, check out the docs, and thanks for watching.